everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Susanna Lynn. I'm a board member of the Wallingford Community Council. We are on Dinsmore Avenue. It's a charming street with well-loved craftsman homes in the heart of Wallingford. Inside the Wallingford Urban Village, there are over 800 single-family homes, as well as duplexes and triplexes. 85% of the houses in our urban village are at least 90 years old. As mentioned in the Wallingford Neighborhood Plan, these older homes are an important part of Wallingford's character. We want to accept growth that is integrated into our neighborhood. We, want, we reject growth that obliterates the neighborhood's essential character. As we grow, we want to cherish and maintain the history, neighborhood character, livability, and family-scale housing in Wallingford. <laughs> ago, it was the Wallingford Community Council, not the city, who first reached out to let our community know about HALA and the proposed zoning changes in our neighborhood. There have been four neighborhood meetings, large neighborhood meetings in Wallingford, two hosted by the Community Council and two hosted by the city. At first, the city assured us that each new development would include affordable housing, that the changes would be slight, and that the rezones would be the same bulk and scale as the surrounding homes, such as residential small lot zoning. However, instead of residential small lot upzoning, the city proposes to upzone more than half of our single-family zones, several jumps higher in zoning designations, very commonly to low-rise two, as would be allowed on this block, which would allow for four or five-story apartments when there are now charming older homes, mm -hmm. and other streets would go even higher to low-rise three zones. The current upzone plan... Upzone plan will displace the most affordable rentals in our neighborhood, remove family size housing, and demolish homes of historic value, and replace them with dense and expensive new housing. And there is no guarantee that any affordable housing will be included in those new developments like we were initially promised. At, at all at all of those four large neighborhood meetings, there was an overwhelming opposition from the people that lived in the neighborhood of the city's proposed changes in Wallingford. And yet, the city has not acknowledged the neighborhood's concerns, and it has ignored neighborhood input. City's communications have been completely one-sided propaganda shows. What, what, what is the use of public discourse if all of the decisions are made at the top? As a representative of the Wallingford Community Council, I would like to make it clear that we are against the HALA rezones because we have zero confidence that HALA will result in a more affordable or livable Wallingford. The city is selling zoning capacity to developers in order to promote turnover and generate revenue. This is not neighborhood planning. The, neighborhood co the negative consequences will be imposed on current and future residents for generations to come. In addition, Wallingford zoning changes are among the most drastic of all the residential urban villages. the urban villages, excuse me, I have the microphone. We reach even more drastic, even more drastic than the residential, even more drastic than the residential neighborhoods that have light rail. We reject the intensity of density and upzoning proposed in the draft zoning maps. This neighborhood has already seriously overcrowded schools, jam-packed buses, and raw sewage overflowing into Lake Union. We have no community center. Our light rail is one of the smallest in the city. There is no light, uh, our, sorry, our library is one of the smallest in the city. There is no light rail in Wallingford. The sewage outflow disaster will not be fixed until 2025 or later. It is irresponsible to upzone without first addressing the serious infrastructure and service shortcomings. Because of these concerns, the Wallingford Community Council proposes a border change for the Wallingford Urban Village that would remove areas of contiguous single-family zoning from the urban village boundaries and focus the urban village growth around currently zoned multifamily and commercial areas, which are nearest the bus rapid transit and commercial service corridors. It <laughs> Woo!
In addition, the Community Council proposes volume three modifications to the low-rise one and low-rise two multifamily zones to increase the supply of two and three bedroom housing with accessible yards by reinstituting unit lot density limits. This may result in slightly fewer units, but it would encourage more family-sized housing that can be affordably shared by multiple adults or families. To prevent sprawl, Seattle Dell developers must build family-sized housing in multifamily uh, Zones. Finally, we want to the city to address concerns regarding transit, parks, school overcrowding, city services, and environmental stewardship before we accept Hollis targeted growth impacts. Well, Wallingford, Wallingford is a welcoming commu community. We are proud to support SHA Low Income Housing, a Boys and Girls Club, a low cost medical clinic, a community psychiatric clinic. We're home to homeless youth services and solid ground and a food bank. We have many rental units and apartment buildings and single family homes and many rent and income restricted apartments that are integrated into our community. We urge you to look at the Community Housing Caucus report for alternative solutions to affordable housing. The Wallingford Community Council will support proven affordable housing policies that work and that respect established communities as they grow. Thank you. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, now.